De Morgan's Laws, a rule of replacement. De Morgan's Laws is really two rules in one, like some of our other rules of replacement. The first rule says, if it's not the case that P and Q, then either not P or not Q. The second says, if neither P nor Q, then not P and not Q. Like all rules of replacement, these are logical equivalents. On either side of the four dots, we have two statements with the exact same truth value that can be substituted one for another at any time. Our first law says something like, they're not both true is equivalent to one or the other is false. While the second says, neither one is true is equivalent to both are false. In both of these laws, the main operator switches between V and AND, while the negations distribute from or to the whole, to or from the parts. Simple inputs can help us figure this out. We'll put in A and B. Well, we get it's not the case that A and B is equivalent to either A, not A, or not B. And neither A nor B is equivalent to not A and not B. When things get a little bit more complicated, we can still do a De Morgan's. We've substituted not A in for P. Notice how on the right side in both rules it becomes not not A. And we've substituted if B then C in for both rules. Notice again the right side, the whole thing is negated. Not just B or C, but if B then C is what gets negated. These rules only work when the conjuncts or disjuncts are the same. If they are, a negated conjunction is equivalent to a disjunction with both sides negated. And a negated disjunction is equivalent to a conjunction with both sides negated. De Morgan's applies in both directions to any whole or partial line as a rule of replacement. It cites one line and results in one line. The main operator must be AND and V only. And the negations move to or from the whole to or from the parts. Let's take a look at how we might translate this. Believe it or not, we use De Morgan's laws in our everyday life and our everyday thinking on a regular basis, even if we don't go through the whole process. For instance, we know that it is not both sunny and rainy today means either it's not sunny or it's not rainy. It's not both, so at least one of those is false. If at least one is false, then it's not both. We also know that it is neither sunny nor rainy today means it is not sunny and it is not rainy. Perhaps it's cloudy or snowy. It's neither one, so each one is false. Each one is false, so it's neither one. We can also use a truth table to see that these are logical equivalents. Looking just at the first line, we see that it's not the case that P and Q has the same truth values as either not P or not Q. Both are false when P and Q are both true, and they're true at all other times. The second line, neither P nor Q, is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. Well, this one is true when P and Q are both false. If either one of them is true, as in lines one through three, it's false. The important thing to know, of course, is that the truth values for either side are the same. How might we use this in a proof? Let's take a look. If it's not the case that P and Q, it's not the case that not P or R, therefore not Q. Unless you're doing a very long modus tollens or a long disjunctive syllogism, there's often not very much you can do with a negated disjunction or conjunction unless you use De Morgan's. So let's go ahead and do so. We've taken those negations from the whole and spread them out to the parts, and the ampersand has become a V. We get not P or not Q. And we'll De Morgan's line two. Once again, the negation has gone from the whole to the parts, while the, the disjunction has become a conjunction. Note the two negations on P in line four, we get not not P. 
Of course, if we wanted to, we could get P and not R out of that De Morgan's, so long as we used double negation afterward. We actually don't want to. Instead, we're going to simplify not not P and use disjunctive syllogism to get not Q. How about a slightly more complicated proof? Looking at these arrows, I hope you see that we're going to want some hypothetical syllogisms to go from A to F. I also hope you see that the antecedent of our first conditional, it's not the case that B and C, matches exactly with one of the De Morgan's forms. And the antecedent of the next conditional, not B or not C, matches the other side of De Morgan's law. We can use De Morgan's on either of those lines to make them match and set up our hypothetical syllogism. So we can De Morgan line one and we get if A then not B or not C. Well, now they match. We've applied it to line one, we've taken that negation, spread it out, and we've switched our ampersand into a V. If we wanted to, we could just use De Morgan's on line two and get it's not the case. If it's not the case, then B and C, then not D and not E. It doesn't really matter which one we do. So we'll stick with De Morganing line one. It's perhaps more intuitive. Now, hypothetical syllogism leaves us with if A, then not D and not E. Now we look at the antecedent in line three. It matches De Morgan's other law. And we look at the consequent of line five it matches the other side of that same law. These two statements are logical equivalents, and once again, we can use De Morgan's on either line five or line three to get matching statements and set up a hypothetical syllogism. We'll stick with line five and get if A, then it's not the case that D or E. Well, now we can go straight, from, straight to if A, then F with another hypothetical syllogism. De Morgan's laws let you do some surprising things, a little bit of logical magic when combined with addition or double negation or both. When we look at something like this, not x, we should know that it's not the case that x and y is also true because this half of the ampersand is false. Half of an ampersand being false means the whole thing is false. If it is not raining today, then we know it's not both raining and cloudy today. We're going to use addition to add on to line one, so we get not x or not y. Since not x is true, it doesn't matter what we add. Now we can use De Morgan's. We've taken those negations, spread them from the sentence letters to the whole, and we've changed the disjunction into a conjunction. We might have said something like this. It's not raining today, so either it's not raining or it's not cloudy. Therefore, it's not both raining and cloudy. Now take a look at this. We know something's true, P. Therefore, it's not the case that not P and not Q. Once again, we see that not P down there. We know that thing's false. So we know not P and anything else is false. It takes a little bit more work to go from a positive, but we can do it. We'll add Q and then we'll double negate that whole thing. It's not not the case that P or Q. And De Morgan's will take one of those negations, apply it to each sentence letter and let us switch the or to an and. Notice that only one ampersand, only one negation is De Morgan's at a time. So one of them remains in the next line. If we wanted to, we could apply De Morgan's again and go from it's not the case that not P and not Q to not not P or not not Q. And then we could do double negation two times and get straight back to P or Q. But there's no real need to go in a circle like that. As in the last proof, you may find yourself using double negation with De Morgan's quite frequently. Let's take a look at this one. Line one, if X, then either not Y 
or not z. Well, y and z, so not x. I hope we see pretty intuitively that y and z being true means that either not y or not z can't be true. But it takes a double negation and a De Morgan's to solve that with logic. So first, we add two negations. If you need to switch between ampersand and v, but you don't have any negations, remember you can always add two of them at a time with double negation. De Morgan's only works on negated things. With those negations, we can now do De Morgan's and get it's not the case that not y or not z. We've taken one from outside, spread it across to each side of our new disjunction. If we want to, we could also simply De Morgan's line one and get it's not the case that y and z. We've got its opposite in line three too. Either way, we're set up for a modus tollens and getting not x. De Morgan's laws are ones that I see a lot of errors, but they're not really systematic errors. They're simply mixing up negations or skipping double negation or forgetting to flip v to and or and to v. There's a lot of moving parts in it. And De Morgan's. And you've got to deal with a couple of different things at once, and I sometimes see people make sloppy errors or typos. So don't. Do your De Morgan's carefully. Really do all of your logic carefully. But whenever you find yourself dealing with negations, go just a little bit slower. At least that's what I have to do.